I know I said no videos this month, but I really wanted to weigh in my opinion on this. This video is a bit different to the content I usually make on this channel, but old habits die hard, I suppose. I'd like to possibly make this a series where I throw in my opinion on films or other matters regarding the railway scene, so let me know what you think. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into the film. The Railway Children is a film made in 1970. Based off the book by the same name, the film takes place in 1905, following three children and their mother who are forced to move to the countryside after their father is arrested on suspicion of being a spy. The film was comprised of several smaller stories all centred around the local railway station and the relationships built between the children, the locals and passengers alike. It still holds up well and is highly regarded as a British children's classic. The Railway Children Return is a partial lie, mostly for the fact that only one of the original children returned. The film is a sequel to the original set in 1944 during the Blitz. We follow three children evacuated to the Yorkshire countryside while their mother stays in Manchester as a nurse. One day while playing around at the local railway station, they find a young African American soldier in hiding, having deserted the army for the way he was treated by his higher ranking officers while stationed nearby. The children agree to help hide him and get him to Liverpool so he can go home. When the film was first announced, I had mixed feelings. On the one hand, we live in a world full of half-hearted reboots and sequels to otherwise outdated properties, and that this was going to be another name in that pile. On the other hand, yay, a railway film! They're rare, but when done right, they can be amazing! On top of that, they can provide a vital lifeline of income to heritage railways. The North Yorkshire Moors Railway is still going strong thanks to that one film about magic chess or something, and the Severn Valley Railway has had a few hours in the spotlight. Not forgetting that one railway in Wales that is the focus of some mad reverence fanfiction that got way too popular. So when the film came out, you bet I went to see it as soon as possible. And well, it's a film I suppose. I didn't go in with my expectations high and the film only just reached them. Before I rip into the film, I will give it a few praises. The set design and art department is on point, it genuinely looked and felt like 1944. The actors were all decent, the child actors too did a good job. Nothing BAFTA worthy, but you're hardly going to get the godfather out of actors whose brains haven't fully developed yet. There were a few jokes that got me, and there was a surprising amount of pretty real racism. It doesn't shy away from the subject matter of the film and hits home how bad black Americans had it, even in countries where they were welcome, so props for not sugarcoating that part of history. And for all you nitpicking train buffs out there who start a concerning number of sentences with the words, well actually, most of the engines in the film are setting appropriate, built in the correct time period, and all in LMS black liveries. With the exception of one shot that had a mogul with British Railways liveries, but it's literally one shot and we never see it again. And yes, there's a few times where there's a goods engine pulling a passenger train. How inaccurate, one might complain. But I know the people making the film either aren't experts on trains or simply couldn't get the engines they needed for certain shots. That's just how it can be on film sets sometimes. You have to make do with whatever's available. With all that being said, the film unfortunately has more things wrong with it than right. The film lacks any real stakes. There was no urgency to get the soldier to safety or keep him hidden. Sure, the military police were showing his picture around, but they never got close to finding him until he tried to catch the train. So frankly, he could have just stayed hidden and been fine. There was a little tension throughout of whether or not he could be trusted and whether or not he was a bad guy, but... It's never really enough that I was ever fully suspicious of him. Another gripe I had with the film, and a lot of films recently, is the poor amount of setup and payoff. A thing will be offhandedly mentioned or shown once and then not seen again until the end of the film when it's needed. This happens with the station porter's radio. He shows it to a kid earlier in the film saying he's been using it to listen to army radio messages and is never seen again with it until the third act when it's needed. All it would have taken is just one small moment somewhere in between where we see him using it to remind the audience it's something he has and hints that it'll be useful later. Without it, the audience forgets and it feels pulled out of nowhere when it's brought back in the third act. On top of this, the film just flat out misses chances for great setups and throws in random details that go nowhere. 
The grandma of one of the kids is one of the original railway children, and I feel the trick was missed for her to be telling the kids the story of her childhood around the railway, making banners and stopping the train, as that would not only tie into the original film, but also serve as inspiration for the ending of this one too, as well as set up the third act. Instead, she tells the kids how she was a suffragette during dinner, and while it does tie into the theme of equality, rights, and fighting injustice throughout the film, it doesn't really add anything to the story. Characters will say or do something that hints at a possible setup, but it doesn't go anywhere. Like the little sister saying she doesn't like wearing dresses or girly clothes. You'd think that's setting something up about her character or a moment later in the film where she has to wear a dress, but it never comes up again. It's just a pointless line of dialogue that serves little to no purpose in the grander scale of the film and the evacuee kids just settle right into their new home. I obviously wasn't expecting Goodnight Mr. Tom, but the writers really missed a trick by not having the city children feel like fish out of water, and having that tie in with the runaway soldier, someone who is also far away from home in a place that's very alien to them. It gives the characters something else they can relate over. There's a scene where a German bomber offloads an extra bomb over the village, but it ends up hitting the graveyard and the film uses that moment to say, not even the dead are safe, oh how terrible war is. They literally had an amazing plot device that could have been used in so many other interesting ways. Have the bomb hit the train yard the soldier was hiding at, creating this rush to get him and help him before the army turns up and finds him. Have the bomb blow out a section of track or cause a landslide, prompting a moment where they need to stop an oncoming train like in the original. But no, a few characters stand around the bomb site and tell you war is bad when the film had a golden opportunity to show you what war leads to. I know this is a children's film, but you really don't need to spell it out like this. Show, don't tell. The editing is somewhat confusing in parts, mostly around the trains. Sometimes the engine pulling a train just randomly changes into a different one, or the shots of the wheels when it's coming to a stop would be of a completely different locomotive. It sounds nitpicky and maybe it's just the train nerd in me being pedantic, but watching an 060 stopping and then cutting to the wheels of a 280 is quite jarring because I can't tell if I'm meant to be looking at the same train. I know studios are limited by the rolling stock available, but you'd think they could at least be consistent with what they had. In terms of sound mixing, the music is nice and all, but could you turn it down so I can hear what the characters are saying? Yes, this is a whimsical childhood memory, stop deafening me with it. The ending too is rather abrupt, the kids help the soldier escape the army, they all run around a field, we get a shot of him boarding the train home, and then credits roll. Also, the film has several where are they now cards before the credits, which to me is the film equivalent of slapping a sticky note at the end saying, by the way, this happened but we didn't have the budget to film it. Even then, the film felt drawn out or that it went on way longer than it should. I kept checking my watch during the screening thinking, is there still more? And finally, for a film with railway children in the title, it didn't feel like the railway was essential to the plot of the film as it was in the original. The children hang around the station yard and stop a train at some point, but it felt more like it was a background detail rather than the central stage the entire story revolves around. In the original, the children write banners for the gentleman who frequently travels on the train, they get the station porter birthday presents, they stop a train after a landslide, they help a boy who was injured in the railway tunnel, all stories with the railway at the core. In this, they find the young soldier hiding in a guards van in the station yard. Had the lad been hiding anywhere else, the railway would have been redundant. They try to get the train to Liverpool, sure, but only because there's military police everywhere. You could have rewritten this film without the railway and it still would have been the same story. If you try to rewrite the original without the railway, it wouldn't have worked at all. Personally, if I had the chance to alter the film, I'd keep it similar to how it is now, but change two things. One, have the children be from Liverpool instead of Manchester and make them homesick. This way, we have another reason for the children and soldier to work together with a mutual goal of going back to Liverpool. Two, make it so the soldier had some sort of infection or severe injury. This adds somewhat of a ticking clock to the mix, as the evacuee children's mother is a nurse back home, and as such, the best chance they have of treating the soldier. It's implied in the film that the military police will eventually find the runaway soldier, but the children were hiding him well enough that I never felt like he was ever going to be found. 
Him falling ill in some way would at least justify them getting caught trying to escape instead of just waiting it out. That, and I'd remove the scene of all the kids peeing. It was an uncomfortable image and I didn't want it in my head, why on earth did you show me that? In all honesty, had this film been titled anything other than The Railway Children Return, I would have considered it passable. Nothing spectacular, just another in the pile of films that are passable entertainment for an hour and a half. But because of the reputation The Railway Children has as a story, it just feels like this falls short. If there's two words I could use to sum this film up, it's missed potential. I feel like there were so many chances to tie things together or go in a far more interesting direction. Like I said, they literally drop a bomb on the town and nothing comes of it. To connect the children and soldier even more, have them be homesick and from Liverpool. Then there's at least the mutual goal of working together to get there that connects them further. They could have had a tense scene where the military police search the freight yard and the soldier has to hide. Or even just the mother looking after the kids asking where her first aid supplies and food have disappeared to. It had so many interesting directions it could have gone and so many chances to build tension, but chose to be safe and risk-free which left it lacking any real weight. I've seen a few IMDB reviews calling it woke tripe and ruined by wokeism. I sternly disagree. This was a real thing that happened, and following a young lad trying to get away from the abuse of his peers when all he wanted was to fight for them is something worth exploring. What brought it down was it didn't fully explore it or get too in-depth with it. The film took a rarely seen part of the Second World War, the treatment of black American soldiers, and showed it but didn't go much further. The American military police that go around beating black soldiers are just these faceless drones that come and go. A short scene of the children asking why they're doing it could have made it so much more interesting and given us another angle on things. I know some would argue, it's a kid's film, it doesn't have to meet grown-up film standards, to which I retort, why not? Just because the target audience of a film is younger or less aware isn't a valid excuse to not try. The original film was made for children and is still a well-made, well-put-together piece of media. The Iron Giant, Rango, Into the Spider-Verse, The Incredibles, all films aimed at kids and yet had so much effort put into them which made them objectively good and still great today. The target audience of your film is not an excuse for mediocrity. As it stands, the film is just a sad case of something that was dealt a good hand but played it poorly. Would I recommend the film? No. If you want a great film about railways and the people on them, watch The Titfield Thunderbolt, The Original Railway Children, or if you can't get access to either of those, Buster Keaton's The General. I wanted this film to be good. Really, I did want another great train film to add to the list, but for now, I suppose we'll just have to keep waiting. In any case, I hope you enjoyed. If you watched the film, let me know what you thought in the comments. And if you want to see this become a regular thing on my channel, just let me know. With that being said, subscribe for more.